Hey, 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 it's Rebecca, and you are listening to Resilient by Design. Guys, today's a little bit different. I thought it would be useful to walk you through exactly what we do, the steps we follow, and how we handle our kickoff day. And kickoff day is essentially the very first step inside of phase three for us, which is implementation. It's something that's a relatively new step for us in the last year, I think, uh, because what I've found is that we used to be really strong in the first two phases of our process. By the end of phase two, presentation and revisions, clients were geared up, ready to go, excited for implementation. We'd collect all their money and we'd be like, okay, we're going to get ordering and we'll talk to you soon when we're ready for demolition. And we'll meet on site at some point. And it felt a little wishy-washy. We had been so strong in the first half of our process, but the second half kind of just fell off the rails a little bit. And we were organized, but not the way we are now. So today I'm going to walk you through exactly what we do to prepare for and run a very successful kickoff. Enjoy. All right. (laughs) I'm Rebecca Hay, and I've built a successful interior design business by trial and error, podcasts, online courses, and so many freaking books. Over the last decade, I've grown from an insecure student to having false starts to careers, and now I'm finally in the place where I want to be. Throughout my journey, it's been pretty obvious that I'm passionate about business and helping other entrepreneurs do the same. Each week, I'll share tangible takeaways from my own experience and the experiences of other badass women to help you build your confidence and change your business. Okay, so what is kickoff day? So kickoff day is essentially one day, not usually, to be honest, a whole day. Uh, It's usually a few hours where we reconvene on site with anyone who is relevant to the project. So typically that would be, let's say, a contractor. If we are doing a renovation, it could be the drapery installer, someone who needs to do an additional check measure. Um, It could be a plumber. It could be an engineer. It could be anything, really. The point of the kickoff day, though, is to just make sure we're all on the same page. After now, the design has been fully signed off and decided. Everything has been selected from the fabrics to the tile to the floor plan, you name it. And that is the day where we go through the home with the client and the plans just to make sure we're all still on the same page. So I'm going to walk you through specifically what we do to prepare for this day and also what we do on the day, and some learnings that we've had, and some mistakes that we've made. As always, I love to share. Um, I can tell you that kickoff day didn't always exist. We would start implementation, guns a-blazing, we'd start placing orders, and the contractor would say, okay, let's get rolling, we've got to schedule a demo. And so we were like, yeah, 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 okay, yeah, sure, like, let's, when can you start? When can you start? And we hadn't even finished placing the orders, and we were already starting demolition. And though this might seem wonderful to a client, things are rolling quickly. Ultimately, it led to a lot of standstill because we hadn't done that due diligence and planning to really set ourselves up for success. And so there was a lot of waiting on trades. Our our materials were behind. They weren't there yet. So now what we do is we tell our clients once they have paid us their deposits for implementation, we start to place orders. And Usually it's a couple of weeks, but not until we've placed all of the initial important key items do we even schedule kickoff. And kickoff is not the same thing as demolition. I want to be super clear on that because it used to get a little wishy-washy for us. And so we would say, okay, we're going we're gonna to kick off. But the clients thought it was was uh, construction starting. And so they would have questions in an email. And then we'd get there and the, or, or there'd be no questions. And we'd show up at this kickoff meeting. And then the client had this anticipation or expectation that the contractor was going to start. And of course, the contractor was just coming to like reassess again with his trays. And then he was going to put together a schedule. And so it looked a little bit disorganized and wasn't a really great reflection of the level of service that we had talked about offering. So here is what we decided to do. 
what we decided was it was really important because so much time can lapse from trade day until you actually get rolling into that project management phase, or as we call it, implementation, um, that what you want is to make sure we're all back on the same page. So once they've paid us, we say, give us a couple of weeks and we are going to schedule a kickoff. Then what we did is we created documentation, so SOPs or standard operating procedures internally to ensure we treat it like a proper step in our process so the clients have a clear expectation of what's to happen and that it is not construction and that we are just making plans for the next phase. So what we do once the client has signed our contract for phase three and they've deposited their money, we send them an email saying, thank you, we're very excited to get rolling. Our team will be in touch to schedule a kickoff day. Then once the team has connected with the client, we've scheduled a kickoff day with the relevant trades. It's kind of like trade day 2.0, actually, if you think about it. Um, But anyhow, once we've done that, we then send them a what to expect document. Now, this is something I talk about in Power of Process. Um, and I probably talked about it here many times, we like to send a PDF to our clients in addition to the email that's pretty and it's branded, and it is a what to expect um, on kickoff. We send a what to expect document with every single step of our process. So the kickoff day uh, what to expect document just says congratulations, we're well, uh, we are well on our way to implementing the design and transforming your home. Here's what to expect next. Yay. No, it doesn't say yay. That was just me <laughs> throwing in my little two sets. So then we have a section that's what to expect. So we it says, I'm going to read it to you so you guys know exactly what it says. You can copy me if you want. It says, our team will arrange a kickoff meeting on site. This meeting includes Rebecca, the project lead, and any relevant trades, including you, or sorry, and the client, brackets you. I think that part's important because you want them to know um, who to expect and what to anticipate as far as the numbers of people that are going to be in their house. I like the, to let them know that, yes, I will be there because I'm not at every meeting anymore. Um, and so the project lead is a key, key component to making sure that their project goes well. And they need to have a good relationship with their project lead. In the past, it's been a project manager. Now we have a senior designer. I mean, that's kind of constantly changing. But we make sure we let them know who to expect. Then it says, the meeting is for the purposes of reviewing and confirming the project scope before ordering and construction begins. Uh, Oh, so that's interesting. (laughs) I just corrected myself. I guess the kickoff happens right away before we place the orders just to make sure we've got the right quantities for tile and all that jazz. Got it. Um, Then we say in this meeting, we will review the drawing package, assess construction and furnishings timelines, and we'll walk through the scope in detail space by space. We'll set up the contractor with a lockbox and code with a key for access. If your project involves construction, kickoff is not the same as demo day. So put this little thing at the bottom. The exact date for demolition will be determined after kickoff and product timelines are confirmed. So that's, we just want to make sure it's super duper clear to our client that Yes, we're coming. Yes, with the contractor. Yes, we're going to get him set up with a key, but he is not actually starting his work on kickoff. And then I put a little section that says preparation in preparation checklist, like what, how to prepare, basically. And I say this meeting is usually no more than two hours. Again, I would change this descriptor depending on the size and scope of the project. And then I say come with any questions you have about implementation. And also we recommend you bring a notepad and pen if you want to write down um, things that come up in our meeting. And at the end, I do put a little note that I say the client must attend this meeting. So unlike trade day where we say you don't have to be present, this is really, really important. We've learned this the hard way. We have done um, kickoffs where the client was not present because they're like, oh, I'm at work. Do I really need to be there? And then, of course, we thought, well, not really. Like, we know what we're doing. And then, of course, the back and forth of questions from the client about what did the contractor think about that thing? And I forgot to tell you guys that we found this other thing. Like, there's so much information that needed to be covered that now we make it a non-negotiable that the client is there for kickoff. They don't have to be be there for demo. They don't really have to show up for any of our site meetings, but they do need to be there for kickoff. I want them to fully understand what is entailed. Where's the trash going to be held or the demo bin if there's a bin? Um, You know, what is the access going to be like? I want them to know and feel confident that we have taken care of their home. 
Um, and it, I just say in this document is the last note on this what to expect page. This uh, we sorry, I say that the client must attend this meeting. This is to ensure we are all on the right track and we're able to deliver the space without any surprises. That is a living, breathing document. As we do it, we continually, there's new things that pop up. And so we add them and we tweak it, but we do create a PDF. We do email it to the client so they have it. Um, and I think it's really important because this way they get a pretty clear sense of what's happening. So that's the first thing that we do. We send them, we book it, and we send it to them. Then we have a few things that we do internally. So we have a pre-kickoff day checklist. We have checklists for everything. And if you take power of process, you will learn that. I like my checklists. It's the only way that I can ensure that everybody else in my organization is doing things in the order and all the things that I would expect them to do. So first of all, we send, um, we have a demo and construction document. It's not really a demo and construction. It's like working with Rebecca Hay Designs document to any new contractor and trades if it's applicable. And this essentially is just a reminder of our process for our trades, what it looks like working with us and who you can communicate with, the numbers to call and what the expectation is, our role between them and the client. It's really helpful just to sort of level set. We also then send them a reminder email. So once we've booked the client, sorry, we send the clients a reminder email. So once we've booked that kickoff, then the design lead or the project lead will send the client a reminder. I think um, Google Calendar has been our best friend with this. We used to just set up a meeting and then like the day before we get the client emailing us to say, just making sure, just checking in, is our meeting still happening? So now in order to eliminate that, we just create a Google Calendar event and we invite our client. It's in their calendar. They can see all the people who are attending or not. You could just invite them and have a separate one for your trades if you want to keep the trades information private and secret or whatever. Uh, But I find that's been really helpful. And then we have a list of what you need to prepare to bring as the design project lead. So we always bring printed drawings and a scope of work a printed copy of the kickoff day checklist, which I'll walk you guys through in a minute, a printed copy of our COVID-19 protocols. I don't know if we still need to do that, but that's what we've been doing right now. Um, And we bring any required samples that need to be confirmed or viewed by the contractor, such as trim and molding samples. This is something that we just added because we found that we were at kickoff and the contractor's like, well, what's the baseboard you picked? And of course, of course, it's specified in our package. However, um, sometimes I find in residential construction, it's just a lot more helpful to have physical samples that they can have because then they'll look at it and they might highlight something. They might say, oh, well, you know, you really need a back band for this door trim because the baseboard is so thick that, you know, it's going to stick out or what have you. So that's been really helpful. We try to bring samples. um, We use these cute little, you can get them on Amazon. There are these clear, I want to say Ziploc, but they're not Ziplocs. So there are these clear like zippered um, pouches and then we do them by room or if it's like all the trim will be in one just so it's all together and we bring those so that we can quickly grab samples. They stay clean and organized, um, but we have them uh, in a bag so that when we bring them to site, we can show whoever needs to see what's going on. And it's really helpful to have those on kickoff because oftentimes contractors, they don't really know, like obviously we bring our drawing package and they can see, uh, we like to show them the presentation. So we put it, eventually we will put it into a binder when construction starts, but so that they can just get a visual of what it's supposed to look like so that they can see the vision too. I think it's helpful to communicate that, you know, the drapery here is, I know this sounds crazy, but I think it's helpful so that they understand there's a reason we're doing the header that way because we have these incredible drapes and they're going to be fully closing. We don't want to, you know, we don't want to see the hardware, whatever it is. It helps them understand the why. And you want your trades on side, right? So the more they understand your why, the easier it will be to work with them. So that's essentially our pre-kickoff day checklist. I hope I'm not forgetting anything. And so we pack our bags, we're ready to go. Clients have their reminder. We can't wait to see you tomorrow. Looking forward to kickoff. All the trades have been reminded. And then it's time for kickoff. So on kickoff day, we dress professionally, of course. We come with our best attitude. We always arrive early. We make sure everybody knows where they can and cannot park. Um, I don't know where you live, but living in the city of Toronto, 
a lot of neighborhoods only have street parking and some neighborhoods have restricted street parking parking during the day. And so making sure everybody understands where they can and cannot park is really important so that they don't get a parking ticket and then try to invoice us for their ticket. Yes, that has happened. Okay. So here's just a quick rundown of what happens on kickoff day. And then I'm just going to preface this by saying, I would love to know if this episode is helpful for you. Do you do kickoff day? Guys, I ask all the time, but can you can you tell me? Just send me a DM on Instagram or, you know, maybe make a post inside the Designer Meetup Facebook group. I'll try and get better about asking those questions inside that group too, because I think it's a really great conversation. I'm sure there are some of you that do things a little bit differently and we can all learn from each other. Okay, so kickoff day. We arrive and we walk through the project scope in detail with the contractor and the client. It's important. The contractor has only sent a proposal. It's probably been months since they were at that house. And maybe it's sometimes a new contractor. Sometimes it is a new trade because the trade that we initially engaged is now busy on a project or on vacation or what have you. Then we review all the revised drawings, right? We want to indicate any changes and answer any questions. We will then review the construction timeline with the contractor. We will review the trim and the molding samples. This is the new one that we added with the construction team so they understand what goes where. We'll talk about any red flags. So for example, something might potentially be more money than they initially quoted. We have that conversation with our client then and there. Then we'd make a note of any change orders and what our procedure is for adding to the scope. It's good to repeat this, even though it's in the contract, we talk about it early and often, If the client, because sometimes this happens on kickoff, they add things, believe it or not. And so we need to make sure, okay, that's fine. Like we just had that on a project where the client's like, I'm not touching this bathroom. I just renovated it a couple of years ago. It's fine. But now that everything's ripped up, she's like, well, I'm thinking maybe we should just replace the tile. We're like, absolutely no problem. We are happy to take more money from you. Now, I didn't say that, but uh, so we said, okay, here's the process. So the contractor is going to put together a proposal for this for this change of work or whatever they want to call it. And then we will put together a proposal and that will be built hourly. And so that they understand that they can add, but that there is a cost associated with adding. And then we will talk about things like where the deliveries are to be stored. Are, is there a place on site in a garage where we can have plumbing fixtures delivered? Are we housing things at our receiver? We like to plan out and also so the contractor knows where materials can go. When the hardwood arrives, because quite often, as you know, hardwood is delivered early so that it can climatize to the environment, where is that going to be stored? Uh, also establish the access, right? So where will the lockbox be located? We try to bring one on that day if we can. If not, uh, we'll bring it for for demolition, but it's helpful to bring the lockbox. Ideally, ask them for the key. If they don't have it, we show them how to use a lockbox so they can add the key. Then we establish disposal. This is really important. Understand now, where is a bin going to be? Is a bin required? Will they just come daily and take the garbage themselves? Set the client expectations. So we do this by letting the client know that our designer or our project lead will visit one time a week. Now, that's the average. It could be more. It could be less. If there's literally nothing going on and we're at a standstill, we're not going to just show up for the sake of it. But we set that expectation that we're not there every day ensuring the plumber arrives at 8 a.m. That is not what they've hired us to do. And so we want to make that super duper clear so there's no mis- um, there's no confusion later on. And we also like to talk about the deficiencies process at this point. I know it's really early to talk about something that's coming at the end of your process, but we like to identify, um, to tell the clients how every week when we're here, we will identify any deficiencies or things that aren't right with the contractor on a weekly basis. We don't leave everything to the end. However, at the end, there is going to be an opportunity for us to make sure that these trades come back or we come back and fix anything that is outstanding. So we let them know just so they can rest assured and not panic as they go through and they see things popping up. We like to let the clients know that we have an open line of communication. We will still send our weekly progress update emails on Thursdays. And sometimes you're going to get more emails from us if there are decisions that need to be made on site. There you have it. That is essentially kickoff day. 
In the past, I have done sweet little gestures for the clients because they have just paid us usually tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars at this point. I like to maybe bring a bouquet of flowers, bring um, a little something for them at their house just to say, hey, we're excited that you trust us to bring this project and bring your vision to life. So, okay, that was a lot. That's a lot of me talking. How do you guys feel about that? I think kickoff day can be a really powerful tool. It's like anything else in your process. As long as you are educating your client early and often so that their expectation is set, everything will go more smoothly. This step, like true step in our process, is relatively new. We realized that we, as we were going through project, there was some disconnect that the information wasn't getting perfectly, not the perfect, okay, perfect doesn't exist, but it wasn't getting to our clients in a streamlined fashion. And there was a lot of room for improvement. That's the thing about process. Regardless of whether you have a process or not, as you go through projects, you start to learn what what is working and then also what isn't. And knowing what isn't working is really powerful because that's when you can implement little tweaks and changes, little tweaks, tweaks, little tweaks and changes to improve your service offering. If you guys want to know more about this and how I teach process, um, go check out RebeccaHay.com forward slash power of process. We do have the course twice a year. Um, More on that to come. But anyhow, I think it's a really powerful tool to have checklists and set established meetings that keep everyone running through the project seamlessly. All right, let me know if you like that episode. Do you do something like this or not? And um, I'll see you soon.